Hi everyone, it's 314 Reactor here. Today we're going to be looking at how to get reshade ray tracing on Unreal Tournament 2004. I've done a video on this previously, but it didn't work very well. It wouldn't work in game, it would only work on the spectator mode. It looks like on the new version of reshade and the shader, it now works in game. So let's look into how to get that going. So first you want to go to reshade.me, grab the latest version of that, which is version 491 which was released on January 9th 2021 download that next you want to go to the link in the description which will take you to this guide on how to get the RTGI shader for reshade download that as well from Marty McFly's discord once you're signed up to their patreon and then finally you'll want to grab d3 d8 to 9 grab that DLL we need this because the minimum version that reshade will work with of direct 3d is version 9 and Unreal Tournament 2004 is d3 d8 so you need this wrapper to convert the incoming D3D8 API calls and bytecode shaders to D3D9, which then Reshade can then work with, as described here. Once you've got all three of those files, the first thing you want to drag over is the D3D8 DLL file. Just drag that right over into system. Uh, so that'll be the system folder within Unreal Tournament 2004, wherever that's installed. For me, that's under Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Unreal Tournament 2004. Next up, you want to install the shader. So now you want to copy that address there with Unreal Tournament 2004. Open up the reshade setup, select the game, go to browse, put in that address, select ut2004.exe, hit open. It will come up with a warning saying it uses D3D8, but since we've put in that D3D8 DLL, it should be okay. So you can just hit okay, click D3D9, and then install all the shaders on this first page, and then hit okay, and just wait for that to install. When that's done, you can close that, and you want to go to the new folder in here, reshade-shaders, open up the latest reshade GI beta file, Drag over shaders and textures, and there we go. That should now be installed. Now we can fire up the game. Also within the preset here, I've set up smooth normals, infinite bounces, sky color mode, image-based lighting material type, and a fade out mode as well. Fade out mode is just, I think you can select one to three to choose different fade out modes of when uh, you move out of range of the RTGI shader, how it fades out. I haven't really tried that, so I've just set that to one. I'll probably look into that into another video, but for now we want to focus on just enabling these other settings here. I'll put a link in the description to another video where I've actually gone over these in a bit more detail. Let's fire up the game. So I've just booted up into the game here and I've just seen that there's a error with the RTGI shader when I've enabled image-based lighting for some reason. And the error is X4509 maximum. Sample of register index exceeded target has 16 slots, manual bind to slot has failed. So I'm not sure what that means. It only seems to happen when I have image-based lighting on. So for this video, I'm gonna have image-based lighting turned off. So we're going to go back to that file or indeed go to the pre-process definitions here and we're just going to remove image-based lighting and it appears to be okay. So that's odd. That's just something to note. It could be because we're converting DX8 calls to DX9. I'm not sure. The other thing you want to make sure is selected here is that copy depth buffer before clear operations is ticked here. Otherwise, if that's not ticked, it won't work. And there we go. So now we have the RTGI shader enabled. If you've never used Reshade before, you can access this window here with the home key. You just hit home and it'll appear, and then you can just type in RT, and then the global illumination shader will appear. Tick that, and we're on. Then we can go to the lighting channel. You can see everything that's going on here. The weird thing is that the gun appears to be slightly invisible, only some rays pick up on that. So some effects may go through the gun. As you can see, that weapon there is kind of going through it. So that's a bit of a trade-off. So some of the settings are a bit high at the moment, so we're gonna tweak them a little bit. So let's go to the lighting channel. Most likely it's the sky color channel that's causing that issue. So it's the ray length 12, extended ray length multiplier. We can crank that up just a little bit. Let's put that at one for now. Amount of rays leave at three, amount of steps rays up to 40. Z thickness uh, one seems to be fine. The weapon doesn't seem to be picked up on it. So there's no shadow from the bottom of the weapon we need to worry about. So just setting that to one seems to be okay. Enable precise light spreading, enable simulation of backface lighting, enable alternate intersection test, and enable ray mist fallback. All have been ticked. We've got the material shader here. Let's have a look at the intensities of the sky color first. There we go, sky color intensity. Let's turn that way down, way down. Probably to about 25 there. Sky color ambient mix, 20. Actually, maybe turn that down a little bit to 15 sky color saturation level one ambient occlusion intensity three let's move that up to about 4.5 next bounce weight we don't want to mess around with too much 
because it basically allows the uh, rays to bounce around infinitely and the higher the weight the brighter it's going to be because the more the rays are bouncing around so we'll put that 0.35 bounce line intensity probably keep down at 3.5 3.5 looks good for that fade out is maxed out we've also got smooth normals on which means everything should be nice and smooth in the environment meaning that the lighting applied to it should also be smoother and look nicer and here we go you can now see that the rtgi shader is now affecting the game properly that's with it on and that's with it off. Previously, this was only working in spectator mode for whatever reason, but now it's actually working in game. So this was pointed out by one of my commenters on my original video, which is linked in the description. Uh, they told me about having to tick this button and how it now works on the newest version. So thanks to them for that. And I believe the commenter's name was Rita. That's R-E-T-R. Not sure how to pronounce that, but thank you very much. I'll drop you a comment with the link to this video. So your comment is very much appreciated. So now we've got the basics working. We've got some tweaks that I usually use. Let's look into the specular and roughness. So if we turn the roughness down, we can make everything look a lot more shinier with the roughness at zero. But of course, that'd be a bit too crazy. So we just want to make it reflective enough on metallic surfaces, but without being too overly reflective on stone and stuff. So let's just set that to 60. It's a bit overblown, so we turn the specular down to compensate. It's about 30. Very similar settings to what we had in Honorable Tournament 4. As you can see, the weapon is just not even there on the normal channel. It's being affected by one of the settings in RTGI. I'm not sure. There's something picking up on it there. Yeah, I'm not sure what setting is picking up on that. Very interesting, though. But yeah, shadowing and ambient occlusion don't appear to be touching the weapon. So, again, you want to make sure these four settings are enabled because with them all off, you're missing a lot of detail. And with them all on, everything is greatly smoothed out. So let's have a look at the frame rate. It's about 71 frames a second here. I'm running a RTX 3090. Let's turn the effect off. And we're all the way up to 144, which is the limit of my monitor here. And back on. So, yeah, it's quite a lot of frames. Yeah, it's a good, uh, what, 70 frames? Quite an impact, but as long as we keep it over 60, we should be okay. Okay, so I think that's everything good. Nothing's too shiny here. Let's go back to the standard channel. So this is with it on, and this is with it off. So you see it's really darkening up those areas, really adding a lot of light from those torches there. And I think it really enhances how this map looks, because you've got all these torches and lights. And the way it's blending the light in the corners there, it's giving extra ambient occlusion around these bits here. Which makes it look a lot more atmospheric. Now I can really feel the difference going from 144 frames here to 70. I can really feel it in the mouse. So this probably isn't the best for if you're going to play pro or anything like that. But it's cool if you're just playing single player. So this looks really amazing. Let's see if we can double jump up here. So you can see you've got light, light coming from this uh, med pack as it spins around there. And shadowing. Let me turn it off. It's just not present in the original game. Back on. So that is just so good looking. I'm so glad we got it working. And look at the lighting effect from the uh, secondary there. It's just so cool. The settings I've got really enhance the lighting. They enhance the colors as well. They make it look a lot more vivid. Also got extra lighting and shadow from the adrenaline things here as they're spinning around. So that's water section. Let's turn the effect off. And back on. So that's just a ton of extra shadowing, especially under the the bricks here. All that extra ambient occlusion under there that's just not there on the normal game. Got the lighting channel. Look at that. Oh man, the extra depth added there. And again, nice and smooth with the normal maps, especially on the rocks there. Look how smooth that looks. That's what I was talking about with Doom Eternal. The lighting on the rocks can look really horrible because they're so low poly. Whereas here, it looks really nice and smooth just because of those normals, those surface normals. So we go to smooth normals off. You can really see, look at the difference. I think smooth normals should be helping that out as well. Yeah, look at that. In the normal channel and sometimes under the standard channel, things can look higher poly with these smooth normals on because the way the lighting's being applied to them. Like you can see the little segment there lit, segment there lit, segment there lit. Got the normal channel. Look, <laughs> look at the difference. Like really low poly and then smooth normals on. Look at that. And that's still the same underlying geometry. It's just the way those normals are being filtered 
just makes it smoother and therefore the lighting looks better on it as well so that's really cool let's move on to another map let's go on to lava giant 2 it was in one of the unreal tournament 2003 bonus packs i believe and it was also in unreal championship but it's not in ut 2004 you have to download it there's a link in the description to lava giant 2 for ut 2004 if you want to try this out yourself it's a really cool map but yeah let's have a look at the rtgi on it so again you got that shading there spinning around it looks amazing let's turn it off can really see the edges of that wall they look pretty nasty and boom turn it on ambient occlusion tidies it up a little bit adds a bit of smooth gradient lighting in there bit of extra lighting from the flag there as it moves around a lot more depth to the scene extra shadows behind these rails here that aren't there in the normal game so the effect on the effect off so yeah look at that huge effect on the gun there some of the lighting affecting the gun there some of it not that's why you can see lighting going through it and then, but the side of the cliff edge there, heavily being affected by it. You can really see it there. Look at that. Underneath. Massive extra effect. Could be a bit too bright, but I think that looks awesome. Let's look down at this area. Oh, look at that. Let's turn the effect off. And then back on. Look at that extra glow. Just everywhere. Up the sides. The extra ambient occlusion. Again, got some lovely shadowing and lighting from that spinning around there, that armor. And it's all part of the same, like, ray tracing system, so it all just blends really nicely. Now, let's see if we can use the translocator. Go over here. Uh, grab the tag cannon, or the ion painter, as it's known in 2004. I think it's called the tag cannon in Championship. Let's see if we can fire off the satellite. Yeah, awesome really high view of the map here oh man that looks good that looks really good so let's move to another map and see how that looks let's have a look at how lost faith looks so this has a lot of interesting lighting on it but also a lot of dark areas so without the effect a lot more flatter it gives it a kind of hdr look as well because it's really allowing darker areas with detail in but also much brighter light sources because obviously Unreal Tournament 2004 doesn't have HDR rendering so the lighting is going to look a bit flatter. That is really nice. Look at this foresty bit up here. So it's making the forest look darker out there as you'd expect in this kind of lighting as time and night. But also still allowing the brightness from these other areas. Again, you've got this shadow and lighting from that flag as it moves around. The extra blue lighting on the floor. Darkened areas with ambient occlusion. You see the effect on the gun there. You see shadows going through it a bit more, obviously, on this level. But again, it's not too bad as long as you don't focus on it too much. Hopefully, there'll be a fix to that in future. And overall, it's kind of worth it. Because the offset of how much better things look with it on. Oh, look at this underwater bit here with these glowing crystals. Let's turn the effect off. Back on. Again, you've got the real really dark areas back there as you expect in the cave maintaining the brightness of those crystals even giving like a bit of extra bloom to them as well oh and i just love those old school water effects see look at the lightning effect that it's having there you just see the water being deformed look at that so low poly but it's awesome it just brings you back look at that ah so good my real direct x8 era stuff love it so let's load up a big map and see what effect it has there. So we're going to need to go on Onslaught and Torlan. This is a pretty large map. So it'll be really interesting to see how... Oh, that was weird. There's like some sort of massive shadow underneath there. So let's have a look here. Let's turn the effect off. Whoa, okay. That's adding in a lot of extra stuff. You can even see details of trees there. And they look a bit excessively bright. So the rest of it looks okay. But these trees in the distance here look like they're really reflecting a lot of sunlight. I think that'll be the sky color mode really kicking in here. Really kicking in. Let's turn that off just to see. Hmm, no, it's not. You see the sky color certainly having an effect, but it's not what's causing that insanely glowing tree out there. Next bounce weight. Nope, it's not that either. Specular, there we go. Specular really curbs that down. So if we put Specular to 12, maybe even 10. Still get a nice, good effect there. But not too bright. We're even getting, like, shadowing on the distant trees there. That's really cool. But still, some of the trees in the fog there are still getting a bit too bright. So let's have a look at this more metallic surface here and see how that level of reflection is working there. Roughness. So that's not too bad. 
still giving a bit of a reflection there as you can see but not too excessive and on the ground there as well but it's not too noticeable so let's see if we can go high up let's get in this here so yeah there's like a weird shadow going on here yeah look at that when you go high up i'm not sure what's causing that oh it's something to do with whatever this is what is that so when you're in a vehicle or like flying up in the air in spectator mode yeah it adds this weird circle around the entire map that then adds this weird shadow so it's in any vehicle as well so it's in spectator mode and in any vehicle it adds this weird thing around here there's something weird about unreal tournament 2003 2004 with the spectator mode because before spectator mode was the only place where the rtgi shader would work and now it's the only place we're getting this weird skyboxy shadow thing it's like the RTGI shader is only being applied within that circle as well, because you can see all the shadowing from the trees are gone in the distance. Because look, when you hop out, the shadowing on all the trees in the distance is back. I think some of these are just going to be oddities with the fact that it's an ancient game running on DirectX 8, and we're converting all the calls to DX9 with that wrapper, and then running Reshade on top of it. So let's look at one more map. Let's have a look at Ice Tomb. This should be really interesting. So this with the effect on. Let's turn the effect off. Wow, okay, that has a serious effect. So I think this is where you're either going to love the effect, or you're going to hate it. Like, the blue lighting is just bouncing around. It looks so much colder and more icier. And all the ambient occlusion in those little bricks there, those ice bricks, it just looks really cool. The huge amount of glow from those <laughs> crystals there. Wow, look at that. Specular is doing a lot of the work there. But even when you turn Specular right down, it still has that blue lighting effect. And this is probably one of the levels where we could probably crank that roughness down, because obviously it's ice. Oh yeah, okay. That looks cool. <laughs> Look at that! Okay, we probably need to turn the specular down to compensate. There we go, let's turn it down to 8. That's some serious ice. That's for the effect off. And then back on. Look at that. <laughs> oh, that's... That's brilliant. That's an amazing effect. Oh, I love that. It's like an ice palace. Oh, it's an ice tomb. <laughs> wow. Let's go crazy. Specular 8. Roughness 0. Oh, it doesn't even go to 0. 0.05. That's like max reflectivity. Look at that effect on all the ice blocks. Oh, it's so smooth as well. That's really smooth. So if we turn smooth normals off and look at that reflection there on the rock in the middle there. Oh, look at the difference. Look at the difference as we move back and forth. It's almost like moving up from like the old uh, garage shading to like fong shading kind of thing. I'm not sure how you say garage. Garad? Garage shading? Where the crosshair is, that rock. The way that reflection moves across it, and then you crank those smooth normals back on, gives it more surface to work with, and boom. Look how much smoother that is. Again, turn the effect off. Like, it's still a bit shiny, but it's not really properly reflective. It's just kind of like a specular map they've got on here. So to have it reflecting the environment around it in real time, oh, that is so cool. That is really good. This is going to be the thumbnail that people are going to love. Or they're gonna hate. <laughs> Damn, that's good. Oh, I'm so glad this RTGI shader works now. Again, thank you to that commenter for letting me know about this. So I'm probably gonna wrap the video up there. Thanks for watching. Again, all the links are in the description. Please do like and subscribe. Hit the little bell, really helps the channel. I'll probably do another video on this at some point, covering off more maps. And I may even try it on Unreal Tournament 2003 just to see how that looks. I hope everyone's staying safe. Keep an eye out for more videos on this and more tech projects. And I will see you in the next video.